Welcome to another edition of Africa Sideways. My name is Big Sig Simpson and on the back of my last video, top 10 trucks for under 10 grand. Now we're going to slash that in half and go top 10 trucks that are ready to go wheeling, four wheeling and potentially even some light to moderate overlanding. These need to be affordable, off-road ready and able to take a fair amount of punishment. I haven't said it, it doesn't necessarily need to have low range because I've in my own in my own experience I've seen that you can get to a lot of places without, without low range. Sure if you want to do grade 5 off-road you're going to need low range but your average plonker unless you go into a designated four-wheel drive track 99% of the time you're not going to use it. So let's get straight into it. Top 10 4x4s under 5,000 US dollars. I'm going to have to start off with a soft rotor. Yes, it's a soft rotor, but it can still bang off road. It can still do grade 2, pushing grade 3, even more if you give it a, a lift and bigger tires. We're talking about the first generation Nissan X Trail, which first came out in the year 2000, the millennium. Big up Robbie Williams. And they produced that till 2007. That is a T30 model. Good uh, uh, departure angles and approach angles. It's got a, over 200 mil of clearance, which is the standard benchmark for half decent off roading. It's got an E center diff lock, which me have I've driven the I've driven that and the and the T31 in really good off road. That center diff does make a difference. It's not a it's not a proper full mechanical diff, but I've noticed the difference between it on and off is chalk and cheese and for that it has enough off-road ability. It's cheap and cheerful. You can pick up one of these for three, four thousand, four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. You can get one with under a hundred thousand miles on. Good for the family. I wouldn't do, take the two liter. It has cylinder head gasket problems. A 2.5 liter petrol is the one you want to go for. I've heard of issues with the diesel but the diesel is very frugal so whatever extra maintenance you're going to be taking with the diesel you're going to get it back on at the pump number nine is the Subaru Forester first generation which with its all best all-wheel drive system in the, in the business of all the all the soft rotors decent clearance at 200 moles easily modified to be a serious off-road it does have a low range switch to which 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 lowers the revs which alters the rev pattern for for more of a crawling speed so it does have that you could put a two inch lift on there and bigger tires and it's gonna be able to keep up with dare say it's your average land cruiser you can pick one of these up for three four thousand dollars cheap as chips and a lot of them have never really been off-roading so if you can get a house one that's just been driven by a housewife to the school and back perfect that's a really cheap affordable way to get into four-wheeling and there's a lot of mods you can do with it comfortable interior and the japanese reliability number eight on the list the forefather to the nissan x-trail but this one was even more rugged body on frame low range we're talking about the nissan Tirano. first came out in 1993 for the first generation and the second generation came out in 1999 not much difference between the between the two models some cosmetic changes they got the 2.7 turbo diesel in the south african model overseas it also comes out in a three liter turbo diesel which has more power pretty so solid reliable engine it's the same engine that was in the hard body the 2.7 and the three liter is the one from the from the patrol which you get mixed reviews but anyway you can pick up one of these for three four thousand dollars in south africa fifty thousand rand will get you a good one very very strong very very robust the only problem is they didn't make that many of them so parts sometimes can be scarce and expensive but one hell of a package it's got about 220 230 moles of clearance very it's probably the cheapest serious off-road if we can say that that you can buy is a, is arguably is a is with four doors is a Nissan Tirana which gets it in to number eight on the list of top 10 
four wheel drives under five thousand dollars moving swiftly on number seven let's get the music for the queen out god save the queen the the land rover discovery one the tdi version i wouldn't really touch the petrol version with the barge pole but that big v8 is a massive guzzler you're looking at about 16 liters for 100 k's so for any time of of long overlanding or heavy four wheeling you're going to need big big cash to run that particular truck but the diesel is very good the first generation is still relatively workable for your average mechanic when you get to disco three and four there's too much electronics and the latest one is just completely overboard but if you it, I'd say if you're going to buy one of these, you need a bit of mechanical background and not be scared to get on your back and get under the car and, and fix it. And if you can do that, the Disco one is, is really, really good. Some say better traction than the Disco 2. Good clearance, looks really cool, comfortable. Reliability issues are always kind of there and thereabouts. That's why you need the mechanical background. But it's still good enough to make the list. Number 7, the Disco one. Moving on to number six, ladies and gentlemen, another Japanese car, which is a very Japanese heavy list because they make the most reliable cars. That is not subjective, that's just fact. So number six on the list, we got the Suzuki Grand Vitara. First generation came out 1998 to two, to not, 1988 to 1998 second generation was 98 to 2005 both of them you can pick up for under four thousand dollars they're really cheap they've got low range clearance is not great it's 200 mils if you're lucky but you can it's 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 body on frame you can easily put a two inch lift on their bigger tires a lot of people do it and make quite hardcore overland four-wheel drive trucks out of the the first two generation of Vitaras. even the latest well, not the, the latest, latest Vitara is a soft rider, but the one before it, the Grand Vitara that's just gone out of production is also solid, low range, a proper four-wheel drive. So you really can't go wrong with that. It's one of the cheapest on the list is, is, a, is the first or second generation Vitara. It looks really cool. It's a bit dorky, but it's, I like it. It's, there's, something, there's something quite trendy about that car, and I think it might be a collector's item in the future. Moving swiftly on, number five, another Japanese car, first generation Daihatsu Terios, which is basically a Toyota with a different badge. So you get that Toyota reliability with Daihatsu, great little four-wheel drive. It doesn't have low range, but it did have good clearance, great departure angles, rock-solid build quality, and Toyota reliability. That car came out in 1997 to 2006, and the later model of that is even probably better off-road, but it's, you're not going to get one of those for $5,000 necessarily if it's in any kind of decent condition. Four on the list. Another Daihatsu, one of my favorite looking trucks, is the Daihatsu Rocky. Started off in 1984 with a 2-liter Toyota engine, petrol, which was increased to 2.2 with a second generation one coming out in 1997 to 2006 and they also put a they also put a 2.8 liter diesel in there I think that might be the same diesel from the Hilux so and a lot of the parts are interchangeable with the Toyota so you're basically buying a Toyota with a with a Daihatsu badge on and saving a lot of money for that Toyota nostalgia extremely good off-road the Rocky great clearance Nice size tires, 15 inch rims with a big tacky on there. Very, pretty economical. Parts aren't that hard to come by. And it just looks really, really cool, the Daihatsu Rocky, which is good enough to get it to number four on the list. And you can pick them up quite cheap. You could get a mint one with low mileage for easily 5,000. And they just look really cool. Most of these cars look cool. The older cars definitely look a lot cooler than the new cars. We can all agree on that. Number three on the list, multiple time winner of the Paris to Dakar rally, the most grueling, you could call it the most grueling sporting event in the world, is the Mitsubishi Pajero. If you want to get the late 90s, second generation one, you can pick up the 3.5 litre V6 
dirt cheap. The 2.8 liter uh, diesel is much more economical, but more expensive and more hard to, hard to come by. And the cylinder heads tend to go after 200,000 Ks, which is not a massive deal, but it's something to consider. In terms of luxury, which is the most comfortable to be in, and which is sort of the toughest, this has got to be in the, in the, in the top two. The Mitsubishi Pajero, it really has bulletproof reliability, really good off reliability. It's got low range. Those earlier Pajeros had good clearance. Later on, they watered down the Pajero, but this is still the real deal. Good enough for number three on the list, the Mitsubishi Pajero, as also known as the Shogun in other markets. You can pick up the 3.5 V6 very, very cheaply, and they're strong, strong engines. Number two on the list. This was a bit of a this was a bit of a a tricky decision where to put this particular vehicle because it's probably all in terms of off road ability is number one or number two. In terms of cold following, it's probably number one. In terms of styling, in terms of cool factor, it might well be number one. In terms of space, it's probably the the worst on the list. But all those other factors and its off road ability. And it's Japanese reliability gets the Suzuki SJ, the Samurai, to number two on the list. As I've said, exceptional off-road ability, good resale value. They all bought the, a, a low mileage early generation one is, is, is slowly becoming a kind of a collector's item. Some people don't even take them off-road anymore. Why would you get something with, with low range and excellent off-road ability and not take it off-road? But anyway, some people just like the look of them. So there you go, Suzuki Samurai SJ, number two on the list for the best four-wheel drives under $5,000. These are for young people or people that don't have much money after this, whatever we're going through. You want to get into four-wheeling, you want to get out there, you want to do on, go on little overland trips. This is anything on this list is going to be Ari Ait. Number one on the list, I mean, it's, it's all very subjective, but somebody has to be the winner. And it's not a Japanese car, surprisingly enough. This vehicle is one of the few American cars that is pretty reliable, rock solid bull quality, and looks cool. Not, you can't say that about many American cars that lost it. In, in, the, in the 90s, so to speak, and, and the early part of the 2000s, there was a lot of grayish vehicles not a bean counting by accountants and whatnot but not with a jeep cherokee xj you can pick one of these up for four or five thousand dollars rock solid extremely good off-road the four liter straight six engine is very very powerful great for towing there's a guy matt's towing and recovery who uses one of these on his YouTube channel is always pulling out much bigger trucks, big F-350s stuck in the sand. All he's done is he's put a lift on there and bigger tires and 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 off she goes. There is a little bit of question marks about the automatic gearbox being a little bit soft, but um, other than that, definitely one of the most well-built American cars in the last 40 years. Extremely good off-road. It is a bit of a gas cut, but it's still relatively light compared to modern day four-wheel drive. So. If you don't pack too light and don't have such a heavy foot, you'll be alright in the XJ. And you know, if I had to look at pure off-road ability, this and the Suzuki X SJ would probably be at the top of the list for pure out-and-out off-road ability. The nice thing about the XJ, it's got four doors, it's got a big boot. So if you want to go overlanding, if you want to take a lot of stuff, the XJ has got you covered. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, and that is my list, top 10 four-wheel drives under $5,000. Let me know what you think. Have I forgotten anything? Are there any Looney Tunes on here? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time on Africa Sideways.